Welcome back, a little bit a lot. Today we're gonna build a barn door. Pretty simple process. I'm gonna make it as easy as possible for you guys. We're gonna build it using this tongue and groove board. Makes it really, really simple. It's just really gluing a couple of cuts here and there to size it up for basically your door. So these boards are five inches wide and then another three eighths for the actual tongue itself. And all I'm going to do is slide a whole bunch of these together. And in my particular uh, situation, I think it's six or seven. I think maybe seven. Seven of them glued together and then uh, let the glue set, obviously. And then I'll build the exterior frame to make it look like a barn door. And then we'll put the hardware on it and then we'll hang it. We're going to put some glue in on the tongue and the groove side here to slide them together. We're gonna line them up a little bit here on the end, just as much as we can, just kind of eyeing it because I'm going to cut off them anyways. So let's get to gluing them together. All right, as you can tell, I got everything clamped down using just what I had, just squeezing this together. And then I got this over top of it, squeezed down. That way there's no bow in your door because once you squeeze them together, you'll create a bow. Then I have another one over here at this end. And then I got uh, the T-track ones here and there. And then well, as well as one squeezing here and another one squeeze in there. So we'll just let this uh, set up for now. After a little while, it should be pretty set. I'm gonna cut the tongue off of the end here at the end, because uh, I don't want that showing. But I'm gonna take this tongue, I'm going to shove it into this groove here. There's probably a different way to do it, but that's one way you can just take that piece, slide it in there, uh, but it works pretty well. Glue that in there. But you want to also remove all the glue that you can see between your seams here because if you don't, boy, it becomes really hard to stain and it's hard to get in these little cracks to sand anyways. And so I just took a, you know, X-Acto knife, or whatever you want to call it, utility knife, and just went down into the groove and just kind of got all that glue out. If you leave that glue in there, it won't stain very well. Uh, it'll leave it kind of a weird color. So you want to make sure you get all that glue out. So I got it cut down to size. My door is 88 inches. Not that that matters. 35 inches across. I have seven of these boards. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cut the uh, tongue off of this end so it makes it 35 inches across. So I cut this member here, this cross member here, 35 inches. And I'm going to point the tongue side, I'm sorry, the groove side of it to the outside. So you don't see that really when you uh, put the door up. You'll see the nice more finished side so I'm making sure I'm putting that to the outside and then I'm marking all of my locations for my screws as you can see I'm just alternating them I'm going to be using these trim head screws this is inch and a quarter and basically they have a small little tiny head on them um, it is a star bit as you can see star drive head and they sink in and you can barely see them which is kind of what the look I'm going for. You could go for the more rugged and get the big ones. And so I'm going to glue this down. I'm to put glue underneath it, glue it down. I'm going to clamp this on and then put all my screws in. And I'll do it on this side and on that side. And then I'll measure the distance between here and the other piece there. Cut that length, cut this length, and then I'll have a cross member that comes across here. So I have to cut that. And then I'll have one that goes like this, and another one that goes like this. Marking the screw location is pretty big.
So I'm making the cross member here, and the way, the easy way to do it is I just put it on the inside here and butt up the inside here, get it right on my corner, and I just make a mark here and a mark there, basically where this intersects that, as you can see. And then uh, just make a mark there and then cut it on my miter saw. All right, so got them on the cut on the miter saw here. You can see it's a pretty good fit, both of them here. And so there is your diagonal supports. Basically these here are your lateral supports and these are your vertical supports. And this just kind of brings everything together and kind of gives you that barn wood look. I'm not gonna stain it uh, for the video, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the hardware all in it, uh, the hangers here, the board that goes on the wall, and then also all the hardware that goes along with that. And that way we can put it on the wall so you can see how it looks. Comes with the hook, comes with the wheel, and the hardware to install it. Uh, so the wheel goes in, you just put this here, that goes in, and you put the little bolt in the end of it, and tighten it up. And then it gives you instructions for the hangers, uh, which is the hook and the wheel, that's the hanger. And so you gotta bring it four inches in, one and a half inches down, and another five, in five inches down, or one and a half inches down, and another three and a half inches down. Um, then it comes with that hardware as well. You just basically drill a hole. You drill a hole slightly bigger than the bolts that come through it. So a 3 h any kind of driver, uh, could be bladed, could be forstner, this is just a regular drill bit. 3 8 works for the bolts that, work, that come through it, just slightly bigger than that. And so what we'll do is we'll put the two holes, one one and a half inches down one another three and a half inches down or one one and a half inches down to five inches down four inches in on both sides put the hangers on you know put the bolts on and everything like that and we will go ahead and keep, continue the process oh and to make it a little bit easier i always drill a smaller hole before i drill a really big hole because the bit tends to move around a little bit so if you draw if you drill a smaller hole and then put your bigger bit after it works so much better Okay, so we're in the bedroom now. The next step is to install a board above the door frame here uh, for the installation of the track. The track does come with 16 on inch center holes, but if your studs aren't 16 on center, you're just going in the drywall and it's just gonna pull that thing right off. So I always install a board into the studs and I know where each one of these studs here, obviously there's a stud right here inside this frame here. There's another one inside this frame here. And then obviously there's one at the very end of here. I just need to find one in between and then that should be pretty good for secureness. So I can put the track up there, securing it into this board, which is gonna give it a lot more, it's gonna be a lot sturdier, securing the track into this board and this board into the drywall. And I've already marked where I needed it, so I put the door on top of a spacer, basically, that's my three quarter inch spacer on top of the floor there. I marked it up here, you can see there's a small mark right there where I want my board, and so I'll just level it, pre-drill some holes, put them into the studs, and then I can put my track up, and then I can hang this on the track. So I have a two-piece track here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it is what it is. So this one slides just like so into that with a hole in the middle of it so you secure the two together. And this is a six and a half foot track. So what I want here is I want this to be just hanging over just a bit from the edge of where that door is gonna sit. And then uh, obviously I want it to go down far enough so when the door slides open, it can slide down all the way. So you will have to have a stop on each end, so you gotta make sure you have room for that. And then uh, I'm gonna line it up kinda right here in the middle. You can measure from your hanger here down to the bottom, 
give yourself another half inch, three quarters of an inch, two inches, whatever you feel that you need from the bottom. And then you can just mount, this will be the top number to the bottom of the hanger wheel right there, plus a quarter inch because it hangs in for a little bit. And then you can just mount it on the wall. And so you can see where this is where my studs are, and this is where it would have been with this mounting hole. And so you can see how it's just a little bit off, and so that's why I put this piece of wood up. So the track is up and I just need to install these stoppers here. And so they have two set screws at the top there. It comes with an Allen wrench. So you'll put it on here so where this, these two little bumps hit the hangers. So it kind of slides on. If you're on the left hand side, it slides on from this direction. And those are going to be a little bit trial and error. You're going to just kind of play with them to where you kind of want your door to open all the way or close all the way. So let's go ahead and set this thing on there and then we can set the stops. It comes with these little protectors here and they and they secure onto the top of your barn door so it doesn't jump the track and so you just secure these this keeps it from uh, jumping the track by hitting the bottom of that uh, bar here and so if you remember the grooves that you had well I didn't fill the top or bottom remember and so that just fits right there in that groove and so what you do is you put it on that end and so when you scoot it down it doesn't shake back and forth and it keeps that from rocking back and forth and that is a barn door right there for you closes nice and easy stays on track and i'm pretty happy with it so uh, if you enjoyed the video give it a like comment if you'd like and until next time i'll see you on the next one